Hey, hey, welcome back to the crusty client type series. In this series, we are talking about the less than desirable personality traits that we find sometimes in our styling clients. We're talking about what they do, why they do it, and how to deal with it. Now, if you're new around here, I got an interesting sense of humor. <laughs> So don't get all butthurt like, oh my gosh, you're calling your clients cheap and difficult. Da, 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 da. We're having some fun here and the shit is true. <laughs> the shit is true. Listen, we are grateful for all of our clients. Super grateful, but it's so important to understand that everybody's different. You can have an incredible person be your stylist who checks every single box, like, oh my gosh, they're this, they're this, they're this, and then they cheap, or they're difficult, <laughs> or they're picky. And we, as stylists, as entrepreneurs, we have to know how to deal with these type of folk because they gonna come around, okay? So today is a big one. It's one of my favorite ones. It's cheap Clarice, people. <laughs> it's cheap Clarice. So I'm sure many of you have come across a cheap ass in your travels, <laughs> whether it has been a client, a family member, a friend, that person that goes out on group dinners and you're like, shit, that cheap ass is here. <laughs> They're going to be impossible to split this bill with. We've all been around somebody cheap but it hits different when it's your client, okay? So a cheap Clarice, she's looking at price tags. She's doing that secret price tag flip. <laughs> Maybe you take your clients with you shopping in person and she's like flipping, trying to sneak a look, right? She's calculating the total in her head instead of staying present during your client fitting, right? She's asking if there's any discounts, if this is gonna go on sale soon. And the worst offense of all, I think, for a cheap Clarice is she abuses your time as to get the maximum amount of value out of your time together. Right, so a cheap Clarice, maybe she's not flipping price tags, but maybe she is texting you at all hours, like asking for more advice. She's shopping on her own while you're supposed to be shopping for her. And she's like, what do you think about this? She's trying to get every little, you know, penny out of you. Like, oh, I spent this much. I better make it worth that much. I'm gonna drive this lady crazy. That's a cheap Clarice, okay? That's a cheap Clarice. So why is cheap Clarice like this? Why is she like this? Because cheap Clarices, a lot of times they have money. They're not necessarily poor or broke. They have the money. They cheap, okay? So why she's doing this is a lot of the time it's rooted from a scarcity mindset. And I talk about this a lot in my programs. I've talked about it a lot, like on the YouTube channel and things. And it's funny because some people are like, I don't know what that is. Like I was on a podcast talking about it and they were like, can you explain what that is? Cause we don't know what that is. So scarcity mindset is like the fear that there's not gonna be enough. Like there is not going to be enough. Scarcity mindset can show up in all sorts of places, right? It's like hoarding things in your closet because you think you'll never find another one like it. Um, it's hoarding money because you think I have the money, but what if money never ever comes back, right? Um, always afraid of, of losing out. So a lot of us have scarcity mindset in terms of money, making money, maybe you don't feel like you're worthy of money. It goes super deep. Like I encourage you just on your own to like go down the scarcity mindset rabbit hole because I'm sure it's gonna pop up for you. But with a cheap Clarice, 
this is like a dominant piece of her brain and her mind. It's this like preoccupation with money and the fact that it might never come back again. There's not enough and it's going to make her extremely stingy, penny pinchy. Okay. Um, a lot of reasons why cheap Clarice is the way that she is, is her upbringing. Okay. A lot of us were brought up in a way where our parents said things like money doesn't grow on trees. Rich people are like this, blah, de, blah, de, blah. So they are carrying all of those things with them. I know that for me growing up, I very much grew up in an environment where I heard stuff like money doesn't grow on trees. Rich people are like this. It wasn't until I was exposed to people who had a different mentality around money and until I did a ton of work on myself through books and seminars and therapy and everything else to adjust my own money mindset to allow for abundance. But most people don't work on that. Most people are never exposed to those things. And if you're a stylist trained by me, I'm going to make sure your money mindset is improved because hello, that's how you're going to make a lot of money. So you as a stylist are coming from a much more evolved place in terms of money, abundance. You know, there's no scarcity. You spend money. Shit's coming back to you. No fucking big deal, right? Cheap Clarice does not have that. So you guys are seeing from completely different scopes, right? Like You've got on glasses, Clarice, her, she can't read the top line on the eye chart. She's like, what? <laughs> She's squinting, right? So you have to understand that cheap Clarice had a totally different upbringing, or maybe it was the same, but she didn't work on herself. So you have to have, you know, that awareness to be like, oh, like if I had never worked on this, I too would probably be like, what? A sweater cost how much? You would be tripping too. So we have to have a little bit of like empathy towards the cheap Clarice, right? Um, also, cheap Clarice's values are being challenged around money. So we talk about her upbringing. So values are going to come into play as well. And all of those things are being challenged. So again, we go in... We go in deep in the psychological trenches here, but if you are brought up a certain way, right? And you are brought up in a way where of course, most children want to do this is like not disappoint their parents and make their family proud of them and, and happy and be in aligned with how the family functions. So if cheap Clarice has already moved out of her comfort zone by hiring a stylist and wanting to invest and level up in their appearance, her own values are being challenged. Like the way that she thought she was or how she thinks she should be is being challenged. So if she's about to buy a pair of jeans that cost $600, that is challenging who she is or who she thinks she is because her parents probably told her that you shouldn't spend more than $30 on jeans. So cheap Clarice is going through this like whirlwind of emotions in her head and you're just trying to style her. <laughs> you're just trying to style her and get her some clothes. But if you're not aware that she has like her values are being challenged, her parents' approval is being challenged, her worrying about there never being enough money and if she buys these clothes, she'll never have money again. That's a lot that cheap Clarice is carrying up top. So we just have to understand that first, okay? Doesn't mean that we always wanna deal with cheap Clarice's baggage. Okay. So we're going to move into how to deal with a cheap Clarice. So the first thing that we need to clarify is what is the reason that she's being cheap? And I'm not talking about like get a whole psychological deep dive on her. Of course, 
There are ways to get clues of this during the consultation process, even during the sales process when you're talking to a prospect. You find all of this stuff out in Style Boss Academy. So that's a whole thing. But there are ways that you can find out like very early on if this is just a cheap person or if this is a person who doesn't quite understand the value of what you and what style provides. So we talk about this a lot in Style Boss Academy. Um, I'll give you guys a micro nugget of it, but price is rarely the factor in someone making a decision to purchase from you. People will always say that's what it is, but that's rarely what it is. It's that you are not properly articulating the value that you provide and the value that they are going to receive working with you. This is why people will be like, oh my gosh, I'm so broke, yet they're carrying a Louis Vuitton bag. Like, oh my God, I'm so broke, but they have money to go out to the boozy brunch. You're like, where that money come from? <laughs> I had someone DM me once and they were like, oh, I'm like so excited that you have a book out, but unfortunately it's just like so far out of my budget. And I'm like, okay, really? Like a $20 book that really was like, at the time, I think it was like $10 on Amazon. But I'm like, all right, Lauren, don't, don't judge. And then I go to their Instagram and I'm like, yo, you're like vacationing in Greece. Like, bitch, come on, <laughs> come on. So it's not about the money, it's about are they understanding the value? And this is your job as a business owner, this is your job as a stylist, is educating your clients on, hey, if you're gonna buy higher quality clothing, it's gonna last longer. Um, <laughs> sorry, can you please write cheap? I'm French, I don't recognize the word. <laughs> cheap means they don't wanna spend money. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to write things in French. I'm American. Um, you could do your own translation there, but cheap means they don't want to spend no money. Um, anyhow, getting distracted by the, by, by the comments here, but it's your job as a stylist to provide education on why investing in their wardrobe is important. Why, if you buy a higher quality garment, it's gonna last longer. You're gonna get more wear out of it. You could resell it, uh, you know, and consign it and get some money back. Um, you're gonna educate them on the fact, <laughs> someone said the books is $12 on Kindle, there you go. Um, you're gonna educate them on the fact that it is proven, <laughs> it is proven that stylish people make more money. Go to my YouTube channel, I did a whole video on it with the studies to back it up. So. Once you're educating your, your prospective clients on this, or even your cheap Clarice, like during the styling process, educating them about like, hey, I know the last time you shopped was 1992, but the price of clothing has changed. <laughs> like educating them on what quality is, all of those things. If you can get them there, then they're like, oh, this is no big deal. I mean, I have worked with clients that their entire wardrobe was like from Goodwill. And the second that I educated them, they're like showing off their designer shoes to me now and their freaking fashion plates. They're like, oh, look what I bought. They just needed the education to shift their mindset out of like the lower money frequency. So if you can do that and clear them, then cheap Clarice, she good, she lost the cheap, she just Clarice now, right? But there are people that are just cheap to their very core and we have to uncover that pretty early too and get our own sensory antennas up to be able to say like, no, I'm not doing this. So I'm not saying that cheap people are terrible. We already went through, they've got a lot of baggage that's making them cheap. They're not being cheap just to be, just to get under your skin. However, because a lot of this like cheapness 
if you haven't cleared them by showing them the value, they're like, oh yeah, we're cool. If you haven't been able to do that and it really is the fact that they are like cheap, cheap to their core, they probably need more inner work than you can provide in a styling session, okay? <laughs> like, that's a lot for you to do. So I remember, um, and anyone who's like in any of my courses, you've heard this story before. I'm gonna tell a little truncated version of it. I might have talked about it on social media as well. But fairly early in my career, I had branded myself as the like luxury for less stylist because I noticed that I had a lot of very like high end rich clients and I would find them really great deals on designer clothing and they loved that shit because rich people love saving money too. That's how they have so much money, <laughs> right? So they loved it. So I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna like really play this up in my marketing. But I started to attract cheap Clarices. And I had a cheap Clarice who I should have known from the jump. But again, I was very early on. I was excited to be booking clients. And she's like, oh, I see your luxury for less stylist. Can you find me Chanel for cheap? And I'm like, well, it's not really guaranteed. And you know, Chanel is like, rarely do you find that lying around for cheap, but I can certainly do my best. She's like, I want Chanel bags for $100. I'm like, girl, you could barely get a Chanel, fake Chanel, on freaking uh, Canal Street <laughs> for $100. Like, a good knockoff Chanel, it's more than 100 bucks. I don't know, I don't buy them, but I know it's more than 100 bucks. So I should have taken that as a red flag to be like, mm, I don't know about this, but I worked with her anyways. I found her amazing clothes at amazing prices, no Chanel, but like, you know, some good shit. And this joker wrote me a rubber check, ran off with all the clothes, and I had to take her to court. <laughs> I had to have cops roll up on her. Like, it was the worst. Mind you, she never showed up at court. Like, I won the case, but because she never showed up, I never got my money. Like. It was ridiculous. Ratchet, terrible, cheap Clarice to the fucking extreme. So if you start to get like hard whiffs of you need like major work and major therapy to get over your cheapness because your cheapness could creep into like criminal activity, we say goodbye, right? We say goodbye before we even get started. So we have to be able to tell the difference early on. And if you're getting someone who is making like really strange demands, if you're having someone who is asking you to work a miracle on like the smallest budget humanly possible, you have to have the strength as a stylist and the trust that better is coming to be like, mm, I don't think we're a fit. I don't think we're a fit and move on, okay? Now, if you do get someone who's a cheap Clarice and you educated them and prepared them and they came into your world, it doesn't mean it's all clear, right? It doesn't mean it's all clear, but this is the manageable stuff that you can deal with. So if I have someone who was buying all of their clothes at Target, um, nothing wrong with Target. Um, thank you. Someone saw me on Bling Ring. Yay. Bling Ring, Real Hollywood Heist or something like that with the title on Netflix now. I'm in episode one and two. Check it out. Um, you know, nothing wrong with buying clothes at Target. But if I'm trying to level someone up who say an executive and I'm trying to get them out of Target and get them into maybe some contemporary brands and they're like, yes, I totally see it. You've convinced me, let's do this. Here's the budget, let's do it. You're still gonna run into things during the fitting. I know, so here you go with Target again. I know, I said something about Target on Instagram and this one follower lost her freaking mind. It was like, I'm unfollowing you. How dare you call Target clothes cheap? They are. That's the point. <laughs> That's the point of getting clothes at Target. They're cheap. Hello. 
<sighs> Anyways, so you convince them, but they're still going to have resistance in the moment because it's such a jump to go from paying, you know, $14 for a shirt to spending $149 for a shirt. So we're gonna bring up things like cost per wear. We're gonna bring up things like, hey, if you invest in this like higher value, better label garment, if you're sick of it in you know six months, we'll take that sucker over to the real real and you'll get back this much money that you can reinvest in your wardrobe. Like educate them, tell them, if you buy better, higher quality clothing now, you're not gonna need to see me again for a minute. And you're actually gonna save money in the long run. So you just wanna keep reinforcing things like this during the fitting. You wanna tell stories about how this actually matters. Like I worked with an executive client, very, very, very high up in the executive food chain at a very major, television network and she wore cheap ass shit <laughs> but the bitches at the water cooler were talking shit about her like they're flossing in their fancy stuff so you you kind of have to pull that stuff out you're not preying on their insecurities but you're just being very honest with them like listen the corporate world is just like high school it's some mean girl stuff you're gonna have to do some stuff to play the game. Let's make this investment. It's going to help with your confidence, your self-esteem. It's gonna get you kind of in the inner circle that's gonna help you move up even further in your career. You're gonna have to keep talking about things like this if you want your fitting to be successful, if you want that client relationship to be successful. And these are the nuances that come with being an amazing personal stylist. You cannot just rely on, I have really good taste. I'm really good at putting outfits together. Isn't that enough for the client? No, no, it's not. <laughs> because you're going to have someone like a cheap Clarice that not only needs style, but has to overcome this stuff. You're going to come across like we did on Monday with Picky Patty who not only does she need great clothes, but she also needs to work on her perfectionism. You're gonna come across a difficult Denise, like we talked about yesterday, who needs great clothes and great outfits, but also is really struggling with not being good at this particular area of her life when she's really good at other shit. So if you can't deal with these types of people, then what was the point of doing all of this great work to build your business, attract clients, great, you know, become great at closing the sale, and then you have the client and it's a disaster. One of my students uh, messaged me the other day and she was like, oh my gosh, I had this client, she was so annoying, she was terrible, and I was laughing, you know, as I do. I was like, haha, she's like, Lord, it's not funny. I was like, it's funny. I was like, tune into the live today. <laughs> It'll help you out. And it did help her out. But this is the stuff that makes you really great as a service provider. You can't just be good at providing your service. You have to be good at understanding the person and dealing with that person. Because what incredible value, like if you are able to get people what they paid for and wanted, but you're also giving them so much more, right? You're also giving them so much more. They're like, damn, this is why my clients say things like, you changed my whole entire life. Like you don't understand. Like this was better than therapy. How did your styling feel better than therapy? I'm like, cause I be knowing shit, bitch. This is why my book's called Style Therapy. I know about people. <laughs> See in the chat, customer service is everything. Yes, and this really is like redefining what customer service is. Customer service goes beyond like answering emails quick or like being great at answering a DM about a question about your product. It's like really understanding the people, right? Really giving them more than what they asked for things they didn't even know they were asking for 
And that happens when we know how to deal with these crusty client types instead of attempting to run away from them because you can't run away from personality traits that are prevalent amongst all people. <laughs> you don't have an ICA that's like, has no issues with money. It's impossible. That's a rookie move I see from my students who come into my course. They're like, oh, Lauren, I did the, you know, work in module four. <laughs> thinking of what module it is. Yeah, my ICA, she makes this much money a year and da 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 and she's not gonna be cheap, it's gonna be great. Y'all, you can have clients that are multi-millionaires that are cheap Clarices. It doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank, you can be a cheap Clarice. You can have not a lot of money in the bank and not be a cheap Clarice. So we have to know how to deal with this stuff because it's gonna come up. It's gonna come up. All right, so that was cheap Clarice. She's flipping tags, she's asking for discounts, she's taking advantage of your time, she's calculating in her head. She's doing this because she's got some major issues around money from her upbringing, from scarcity mindset, and how to deal with it. Ooh, we gotta identify, is she cheap or does she just need more education? and we gotta reinforce her decisions. And we also gotta be really firm with the return policy, just like we did with Picky Patty on Monday, um, because Cheap Clarice, oh, she's gonna try to return some shit later. I got a crazy return story inside of Style Boss Academy that will blow your mind. I've dealt with it all. This is how I know. <laughs> uh, question in the chat, so if she refuses to buy the items, then what? So these are things that we are going to have in our contracts, you know, around like what the client is expected to do. Um, if they don't buy a certain amount, amount of clothing, what happens? All of this is outlined in SBA. Um, we also talk in SBA about extreme cases like that. If someone buys nothing, how do we salvage the relationship with the client to make it right? Um, Probably still won't get that client as a repeat client, but that's okay. But I teach you things on how to make it right because you always want to leave people when possible. Some people, I'll admit, just, you know, goodbye. <laughs> um, but most people, 99.9% .9 of the time, you want to at least leave them with a good taste in their mouth, even if their experience wasn't ideal. Um, but those things, Things are larger that are outlined um, in SBA. So that is Cheap Clarice. Um, we have two more crusty clients uh, in this series. Tomorrow we have, do I look fat in this Francine? Um, so we'll be talking about how, how to deal with clients who have um, extreme body image issues. And then on Friday, we're gonna talk about Know-It-All Nancy. Know-It-All Nancy, she, um, you know, thinks that she should be the stylist, even though she hired you. <laughs> She's a lot of fun. So if you missed the previous types, Picky Patty, Difficult Denise, they are in my Instagram feed and they are also saved on my YouTube channel. So check them out. Um, show me some love in the comments with um, your biggest takeaway from the series so far. And if you're enjoying the series, because I'm having a good time with it. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll see you tomorrow at 930 a.m. Pacific time.